Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 8, Episode 7. This is a recap, so there will be spoilers. Let's get started. And please consider leaving me a thumbs up and subscribe, because that would be really lovely. And now let's look at our participants. Now, in order to get on the program, if you've been watching this, you know by now that you submit a self-portrait. You can submit two of them. And I find this part just delightful to see how the artists have decided to express who they are to the judges and to us. And, you know, this shows a certain amount of creativity and certainly shows their skill level. Now, this was something that they got to spend a great deal of time on. And it may not be a current work. It might be something from uh, maybe years ago, but that's not the point. The point is, you know, of course, you're going to put your best foot forward. Who wouldn't? So you don't necessarily paint it for this program. It would probably be part of your portfolio. Well, yeah, it would be part of your portfolio, uh, but this is what you decide to show to the judges. This is very, very small and therefore a little bit hard to see. Uh, but we'll see more from her later, so I'm looking forward to that. It's a very varied field, and all are very accomplished. And of course, we know by now to expect that in the program, and that's part of the delight of the program, and admittedly part of the disappointment, because not everybody can win. But everyone will get a boost to their career, and each one of the models on the program, there are three models, each one will pick one of these Port uh, the portrait that they do today, they get to pick one to take home. Wow, look at that. Ooh, boy, there's something about that that is, that's quite a statement. <laughs> nice, nice use of space and wow. Look at the design elements there of the clouds and the person. Okay, first uh, model up is Arlene Phillips and she is a choreographer. Now, these are British personalities, so I'm not necessarily know who they are. But I watch a lot of BBC. But uh, you, you know, now we're now they're starting to get into some of the more um, some more of the celebrities that are either behind the scenes or maybe writers. Not necessarily the faces that you see all the time. Four hours in, the artists turn their easels around, and the um, and we get to see what they've done. And one of these will go home. Now. This has, as I said, this has nothing to do with the final judging, and it hasn't really been four hours. They've had two hours to work, a break for lunch, which is an hour, and then two hours more. They've also been interrupted for interviews, and uh, they can paint when the model is not sitting there, and many of them use technology in order to do that. So this is the first one up. Um, I don't have a whole lot to say about this one. It's, it's certainly... Uh, boy, this is tough because it's fine, but it's not something that's going to resonate with me that I'm going to remember. And that's because there just isn't a lot of expressive color being used in this. It's certainly descriptive. I like the composition, putting the figure on the left side of the rectangle. That's clever. And it's certainly clever to put that background behind her because it, it enhances the form. I wonder why she didn't put that background around the whole thing, that kind of a... Yeah, um, orange yellowish thing going on but I'm craving some complementary colors that would really set that off. Now this is a really interesting piece because this person was extremely ambitious and did the whole figure and in talking with interviews with people who've been on the program they often will say that you have to pick one or the other. You don't you just don't have that much time in four hours to accomplish the whole scene but this person did and they did an absolutely beautiful job. So you know, how are you going to c compare this to the one before? I have no idea. So <laughs> we'll leave that aside. Here's the next one. Now this one, th th you know, part my language, but I think this is perfect. I, I don't, <laughs> it absolutely looks like her. It is clearly a painting, not a drawing. They have volume and roundness to the forms. They've used expressive color. So they're not matching to what they see in front of them, but really showing with expression what they want to show about the sitter. And it conveys a certain expression from the sitter and conveys some kind of inner life. So I have to say to myself, okay, I don't know what you're looking for, judges, but this, this certainly seems to do the job for me. But I'm not a judge. So we'll have to see which one Arlene picks to go home. Now, I thought she would pick this one, hands down, but... 
Uh, I am nearly always wrong about these things. And so uh, let's see which one she picks. Now remember, this is going in your home, which is very different than the final commission, which is going to go in a gallery. And a gallery tends to be a bigger piece and tends to be a little bit more dramatic because, you know, the gallery setting is enormous. So here's the one she picks. Quite contemplative, so it must have had some meaning to her. And I say good for you. So that's an honor, and now we go on to the next model. Now the next model is, let's see, oh, it's Ali Jawad. And he is a power lifter. So, <laughs> as one of the uh, artists who was uh, painting him said, he, he, she wanted to show how powerful he was. And you, you can see that in his upper body and his neck. My gosh, this guy can, can certainly lift. So, uh, oh, I need to stop saying so all the time. I'm working so hard. I did it again. I'm working hard on it. All right, I'm going to put a penny in a jar every time I say that. Um, now, the artists turn their easels around, and we get to see our first look. Now, the first one up is really, really small, but let's look at it close up first so we can look at it as a contender, although I don't know how this translates into a gallery piece because, again, of how small it is. It's not a criticism. It's just that the people who commission the piece are probably going to have some criterion that they want. So, uh, these are very, very broad shoulders, so I see the exaggeration of that. They include, this person included the background. It's very carefully rendered. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a perfect image of what, what she would have seen in front of her. So, oh, I did a penny in the jar on that one. Quite beautiful, but you see how small it is. I find it hard to believe that this can kind of compete with some larger works. And it seems like that's consistently how she works with, with a very small uh, format. Here's the next one up. This is a much more painterly version. I'm not sure it resembles our sitter at all. And on this program, that may not matter. What matters is how good the piece is as a painting. It's a really fabulous painting. I, I really, I love the colors um, using that orange behind and a lot of blues in front is going to create much more color contrast than you would have if you didn't use complementary colors. It's, it's carefully done and executed, so I think this is quite beautiful how, as a painting, but typically when people come to you for a painting or, you know, portrait especially, they do want to have a resemblance to themselves. It's commemorative and I'm not so sure this fits the bill. Now, the next one up, without a doubt, looks like our sitter. I mean, this is spot on, so look at that, wow. Now, this person makes it look easy. Now, one of the things that this person is doing that is uh, done extremely well, but is, is, is usually something I don't like, which is sort of the outlining of forms. Look at that, wow. That's really powerful from far away. I think he's going to pick this one because I think it shows his power. It certainly looks like him. It's a beautiful size. I love a square. I love to paint in a square. We will see which one she picks and whether she will go on to the semifinals or not. I, I do not know. And as I said, hashtag Joe is always wrong. I'm nearly always wrong about who the judge is going to pick because they're always looking for, as they say, for something different. Is this different? I don't know, but I'm certainly going to remember it as a very, very solid work. And I would like to see more from this person. Now, our next model up is Chris Packham. He's a naturalist and a photographer. So that's very interesting. So he's going to be really used to images. So it's going to be interesting to see which one he picks because he lives in a visual world. And four hours in, the artists turn their easels around and we get to have a look at what they've done. From far away, it's a little hard to see, but it looks like a strong field. So I'm looking forward to this. They certainly had quite a bit to work with, I think. The very angular face. No background to have to deal with, so that could be interpretive. Oh, look at this. This is very interesting. This is very interesting. I see lots of squares and triangles in this one. It's very, very geometric. 
which is an interesting choice. Huh. I, it sure looks to me like, well, obviously this is done with a flat brush and perhaps some palette knife work as well. It's very carefully done. And, oh, and has a very strong resemblance to our sitter. Oh, I remember his self-portrait. Yeah, this guy knows what he's doing. I wondered if maybe this guy was recruited to be on the program because he's extremely strong. I know he's a professional painter. Not that that matters in this program. On this program, you're self-described whether you want to describe yourself as being a professional or not. But it may factor into his experience level and success as well. This is the next one up. It doesn't look quite as much like our sitter, but it's, it's beautifully done. Now this is close up. We're going to pull back a little bit. See how it's not outlined like that earlier one was of, of uh, Ollie. Oh wow, look at that. That's powerful from far away. Oh, I especially like the work she did in the clothing as well. It shows a certain degree of movement and ease. Oh, wow. See, now that could have gone really, really bland if she had used a lot of titanium white to get her values. It could have gone extremely bland and chalky, but she didn't let it do it. But it works better from far away than it does from close up. But quite frankly, when you go to a gallery, that's really important. Very few people stand directly in front of the painter. Uh, the painting, I mean. Many people, you know, you, you stand back. This one does not look like our sitter at all. It does suffer from our titanium white issue, which is where things become a little bit pasty or chalky. Uh, so it, it's, it's, it's so flat compared to the first two that came on. Now that could be a stylistic thing, but I, I don't think so. I remember her self-portrait was quite flat too. So we'll just move on from this and see which one Chris picks to go home. I have no idea which one he'll pick, but it's going to be interesting, as I said, because he works in a visual medium, so he's seen tons and tons of images. So let's see which one he picks. Oh, he picks this the very geometric one. That's a beautiful piece, and I've got to say, it's going to be memorable. memorable. Good for him. Now, our next part of the program is to go on and look at the final judging. Now, the final judging is where the judges will pick only three of these people to be on the semifinals of this episode. And from that, only one will go on to our actual semifinals of the program. And this is, this is gonna be really hard in order to pick somebody. So let's see what, this is the first one they pick. We've talked about this one before in terms of how geometric it is, it's very strong. As I said, this is very geometric, but I, I really appreciate this. I do think this is done with a palette knife and certainly with a flat brush. Very carefully executed. Certainly looks like the sitter and carries a certain weightiness to it. And I mean that in a good way. I mean, this is, this is a, a, a famous person who's done a body of work. And I, I, it has a commanding presence, I guess is what I'm trying to say about it. Now on to the next one. This is absolutely a gem. I mean, it's absolutely exquisite in every way, but I just think it's too small for the final commission or to win the program. It's exactly maybe the kind of piece you might want to have in your home, though, because it wouldn't it nestle lovely there? Yeah, of course it would. Very, very excellent work. Now the next one up is, uh, this is very direct, it does have a great deal of outlining in it, but it seems to enhance the form. So I'm all for this one. I would like to see more from this person as well. Now we get to the final judging. You know, the final judging, we get to see their self-portraits where they had time to work on something and could curate what they were doing. And then we get to see what they did today. Now I'm looking for consistency over time, and we certainly have that here. This gal can de deliver the goods. Really beautifully done. Not a lot of difference between what she did in four hours today and what she did when she had unlimited time. So I do like the brevity of all that. And I think she absolutely nailed the likeness to the sitter. This is, I would like to see more from this person. I think this is an exciting painter. Will the judges think it's an exciting painter? I don't know. Now on to this one. I, as I've said throughout, I just think the format is too small. Of course it's exquisite. 
and she shouldn't be penalized for that, but the final commission is a 10,000 pound commission in a gallery. And if you've taken any work from your home into a gallery, something that appears enormous in your home will suddenly look like a postage stamp on a gallery wall. It's just the way it works. It has to do with proportion. So you do have to, I think you do have to scale up for a gallery. I think you just do. This is fascinating to me because of how geometric his work is. And yet in the background on his self-portrait, it's quite fluid in the clouds and in the waves. I really love the use of negative space here. I strongly think that this person was recruited to be on the program, and I know that that does happen on the program, so I suspect they know this person's body of work. So I, I, I know I'm always wrong, but I think they're gonna pick this person. I just get the sense that, that they were recruited. Remains to be seen because we don't know who the winner will be until now. The winner is, dun, 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 dun. The winner is, yes are very geometric person. So I love that. I want to see more of his work. I also want to look up the work of some of the other artists on this program because I always like to see new artists and support them, of course. So remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paints wet, masks for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.